Hey, ting, what up, you did? Hey, ting, what up, you did? What is going on, my birdies? It is Andrew of Beta AT Production and Publishing, bringing in guys a brand new YouTube video. In this YouTube video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a little baby type beat or a little baby type beat, not the baby, but little baby type beat. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and play the beat. I already had the beat made, so I guess we're gonna break it down. But I just made it, so it's fresh in my head. Um, now. There were two things used in this beat. It was uh, the AT2020 Loop Kit and the AT Sound Kit 5 uh, sample pack. If you guys want to get these two packs, they are available down in the description down below. The melodies were made with uh, Omnisphere, I believe, uh, the melody loops. But the melody composition in this beat is available in the AT2020 Loop Kit. So I'm going to go ahead and play the beat. I'm going to play the intro, chorus, verse 1, chorus 2. Um, it just loops pretty much. So it's nothing. You guys are not missing anything out on the second verse or third chorus. So, as you guys could hear, it's pretty uh, pretty much a simple beat. It's nothing too uh, crazy. Uh, I have my melody loop composition high class playing through here. So if you guys want to hear that, I'm gonna first go through. I'm gonna go through it like intro, chorus, verse, chorus. But before we do that, I want to show you guys what the loop is. So here's a melody loop. <laughs> Yeah, in the AT2020 loop kit, it includes all these loop compositions. And as you guys can see, it includes the track outs as well. All right, so let's go back into breaking down this beat. So after you have your drums and your melody sample, I had just part of the sample coming in on that intro. We just have these uh, drums and then the nylon guitar. <laughs> Halfway in, we introduce these drums. We introduce uh, this special drum pattern, which does not have any 808s or kicks. So if we pull it up, we see that it has hi-hat. Well, we going from top to bottom, we have a percussion. 
all these percussions. Some of them are panned, some of them are centered. Um, all of these are available in the AT Sound Kit 5. Um, so, some claps. I stacked some claps, but then added this extra little mono clap right there. Uh, hi hat, but just like a little drill. Little low hat. Then, like a two step hi hat pattern so listening to that drum pattern it's pretty simple but it has a bounce to it and the whole point of this is creating a little baby type beat and a lot of little babies uh type beats has like a little bit of a groove or bounce to it kind of like that qc migos type of bounce but still um, unique to little baby's uh, sound. So going in, we got our tag and then our riser. And it goes straight into the course, which has all the loop elements and all the drum elements. Because our drum elements in here do not have everything that this has. Uh, the reason why I add everything in the chorus is usually the chorus is going to be the most simplified part of the song. So, like, the, the artist is going to repeat certain words or phrases. So, there's a level of repetition and simplicity within there because we have brought in all of these other elements from our drums and melodies and such. It's a big bang. It's what... Um, keeps the listener hooked hence why we call it hook or chorus so that is uh, why I have everything in the chorus but the verse and I guess you could say the bridge gets stripped away so I already played the melody composition for you guys the loop so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull up the drum pattern so like I said, I added these kicks, which are pretty much just whenever the 808 hits, except over here, I added two, these two kicks right here, and the 808 doesn't hit. Um, our BPM of this is 140 beats per minute, and uh, in G sharp minor, and uh, so when doing that, we give you guys all the keys and BPMs to your sample, to the samples that we produce. So, knowing that we set our project to 140, uh, so it matches the melody composition, and because Lil Baby uh, raps are in a lot of beats within the 140 BPM range, um, our 808s are then set into the G sharp minor. Hey, yo, Liam. So, comment on G sharp, goes down to D sharp, G sharp, A sharp, D sharp. A sharp. There's like a little bit of a bounce, like you can kind of like groove. And that's the whole, you want to make your beats uh, something that allows the artist to uh, vibe out to bounce, uh, something that allows them to pick up a flow real quick. So let's, uh, Keep playing. Let's play the chorus then with all the elements. That's a hook. Now we go into the chorus. We get rid of those drums and the flute. So then we have this nylon guitar and pad. In drum pattern uh, four, I have my 808s and I have uh, a well majority of my 
hi-hat percussion elements, but I don't have some of them. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have my kick. And I think that's it that I removed. So I got rid of some elements in drum number four. No kick, but we still have the 808. But in drum number three, we do have the, the kick comes back in. And we got rid of these uh, little bongos. But the bongos were in here. You see? But we got rid of that. So I'm like flipping uh, some sounds in and out. Uh, it's a way of maximizing uh, the usage of all your sounds without adding even more. Because as you add more sounds, it requires more mixing. Uh, everything gets a little bit more convoluted. You're kind of adding elements that maybe songwriters or artists weren't expecting. So try to keep it simple. Uh, the artists are already w worried about many other things. Don't have them worried about the beat. Don't. Don't overdo it. Don't sh don't show off your unnecessary skills that we don't we don't care about. We just want to make hits. So <clears throat> I'm keeping it simple. I mean, I even have a decent amount of drum elements. I have about ten or eleven drum elements. I think like ten, ten, tenish drum elements if we're including the eight oh eight. This goes on for about. four bars of the 808 in drums it's about six bars of the kick and 80 uh 808 in drum elements and then it's about two bars of just like the drum getting rid of the kick getting rid of the 808 is what i would say is like a pre-chorus bridge section <laughs> Which leaves us with about like a 12 bar verse, which is pretty standard. A 8 to 12 bar verse is uh, standard nowadays. A 16 bar verse is kind of uncommon. Um, but yeah, then we go back into our 8 bar chorus or hook. In our... Uh, that riser is also in the AT Sound Kit 5. All of the drum samples, drum kits are going to be available in the link down below, as well as uh, some of the VSTs and hardware I use. So if you guys want to grab the computer, the microphone, the speakers, uh, uh, VSTs, and mixing mastering software, all of those links are in the description down below. Now, actually, before we get to our master, Let's go through my mix because we pretty much went through all the elements in the beat. Uh, chorus 2 and, I mean, verse 2 and chorus 3 are the same as verse 1, chorus 2. So nothing really changes over here. But if we look into my mixer, I don't really do a whole lot. I did Edison just to check the key of some stuff. Did a little EQing. EQing, 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 nothing, EQing, nothing, nothing, EQing, EQing. Uh, sound good guys are on my kick and uh, EQing. This is just a template I used for my producer tag, so you guys can do something else. And uh, nothing. So, I mean, most of what I'm doing is leveling. Most of what I'm doing is leveling, and since uh, my team and I make our uh, sample kits and drum kits, uh, we already do a lot of the EQing and uh, processing, so by the time I pull it into my uh, DAW, there's not really a whole lot I need to do. The key is just mixing all the elements uh, correctly. Uh, if you look down here in our stereo mono bus or uh, uh, knobs, I do have I do turn my kick 808 and one of my claps into mono. I just wanted to make sure the signal is dead and 
in the middle. I don't want anything spreading left or right. I just want it to be in the center mono. Um, and then I turned uh, one of the pads. I had a little bit stereo. Uh, pads use up a lot of room, so you got to be careful. Don't do too many pads. That's why there's only one pad in here. Uh, and then I turned the Lotus Flute just a hair so mono. Um, if we look at my master bus, I do a, a little bit of the sound goodizer, not too much. Do a bump in the low end, round off some of the highs. I do a, a Ozone 8 imager. I mono the low end a bit. I spread that 300 to 1.5K frequency range. And I stereoize my beat uh, very little. I do a little bit of the, use a little bit of the soft clip, clipper, just bring it up, trying to bring, soften the, cl uh, the transients while bringing up uh, the lows and highs, in a sense, with the, as it's sort of acting as a soft compressor. I use a, the Ozone 8. Uh, vintage limiter I like the modern I personally I mean all three of these options are pretty good they do different each one is a little bit differently the tube is more of a smoother feedback with modern precision I guess it's allowing a little bit more transients uh, to punch through the analog is more of a tighter base and thicker vintage uh, limiting so it's gonna be a little bit what we would say warmer the modern is going to sound uh, more punchy. That's the best way I could describe it and uh, be more sensitive to the transients. That, that's my verbiage of trying to describe these uh, different modes. Uh, I, I'm not doing it too much with the threshold. Uh, maximizer, same thing, just something very small. Because by the time we get down here, there's really not a whole lot. I don't want it to be a brick wall because I still want it to punch, and uh, doesn't it, it'll make it easier for the engineer for the artist to kind of tweak some things. Uh, it gives them a little bit more room. So that's it's about fine. It's fine. It, it's loud. It hits. It's mixed fine. It's well. It's listenable, so it does a job. And that's pretty much it for those beat. Uh, for making a little baby type beat. Uh, most of the things that we were focusing on were getting like the right melody sample. So some a lot of little baby type beats have like a guitar or flute. Uh, they're very percussive-y or with a bounce and uh, clubby nothing too somber or slow so yeah that's uh my way of making a little baby type beat i'm um, sure there's a lot of different types of little baby type beats you can make lots of different examples but this is just my way of showing you guys how to make a little baby type beat this is andrew of beat it at production and publishing Hopefully this was uh, beneficial, and if you liked the video, it helps me a ton if you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment what you think, and subscribe if you want to learn more about making beats, mixing, mastering, samples, and, and such. Uh, the links to everything will be available in the description down below, and I'll see you guys later.